Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. It's Friday evening here. I'm about to have my dinner and start my weekend. I know from some of you it's late Friday. For some of you it's Saturday already. So I hope that you guys are ready for an amazing weekend. It's been a long week, don't you think? I'm coming to you with a pretty exciting video. I love these videos that I do when I talk about the new releases that are coming out in the next month, mainly because I get to share with you books that I'm excited about getting on your TBRs and your lists. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, October is full of books I wanna tell you about. I originally tried to do this as one video. I'm gonna to have to do it as two because it's one video, it's like 26 minutes long. So there are a lot of books for me to talk to you about. So this is part one of books that are available in October. Um, and then I'm gonna start it because I can, it's my channel with something totally outside of October. There you go. So as always, get your paper, your pen, your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR, because I have a feeling you're gonna to wanna to read a bunch of these books. So why am I starting a little bit outside of the box? It's because I'm gonna tell you about a book that came out in September, because I misfiled it on my shelf. I didn't tell you about it in my September book. Uh, anticipation. And that is the gra graphic novel Purdy. This was written by Kickley and it's out by Image Comics. This is the story of Purdy. Purdy is, I love the back of this because it says that she, her two favorite things in the world are sex and robbing banks. She's just gotten out of prison after a 15 year stint and she's ready to get back to both of them. So I don't think this is a graphic novel that's going to be for your young readers, but this will definitely be for some of us adult readers who enjoy graphic novels with a little bit of an edge. And the artwork is super fun. Kind of take a look at it right there. It's kind of got a different sort of sense to it. Um, I think it's gonna be a fun book and I apologize for missing out on it in my September. So again, Image Comics, this is called Purdy. It is out and it's written by Kickley and it's already out and available for you. Now, all of the books that I'm gonna talk to in the rest of this video are out on October 2nd. October 2nd turns out to be a day where a lot of really amazing books are gonna be coming out. So get ready for the start of the month and let's talk books. The first one I'm gonna tell you about is Gone, Gone So Long by Andrew Dubus III. This is the author of House and Sand and Fog, probably needs very little introduction at all. Now, this is the story of Daniel Aaron. Now, the back of the book describes him as a hothead. I think that is going to be con <laughs> a bit of an understatement because we learn, even in the blurb, um, that one night he loses his temper and he stabs and kills his wife. Now, the book starts 40 years later as he is facing his own mortality and he wants to go in search of his daughter who was three and witnessed the act and crime that he committed. Um, his daughter is Susan. She's clearly in her 40s and as you can imagine has been formulated her life and who she is as a person by this awful act. She lives or is you know, involved with her grandmother who is in her 80s. So I think her name is Lois. Um, and Lois is actually her mother's mother. So there's that all of that connection and the lives that they have lived together. Now, I like this line on the back. It says, all three suffer the consequences of Daniel's crime for the rest of their lives, but the biggest burden falls on the women to create safe havens for them. So I think this book is gonna deal with a lot of stuff. It's gonna be dark. I'm, I'm, you know, Daniel is going to be a very unsympathetic character. I will be interested to see what he does with that. And also I think Susan will be automatically a sympathetic character. I'll be interested to see See the decision she's made and what kind of uh, how he sort of develops her. So this is Gone So Long again by Andrew DeBose the third. This is out by Norton again on October 2nd. Um, just as a reminder, most of these books came to me from Book Expo America 2018. Um, I will let you know if the publisher, to, publisher sent them to me separate like the next book um, so I can say thank you. The next book I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to bring it up here so you can see it, is Once and Forever, The Tales of Kenji Miyazami, translated from the Japanese by John Bester. This is out by my friends over at New York Review of Books. New York Review of Books always puts out an amazing title, and that cover is just gorgeous, guys. Um, this is a collection of um, Kenji's short fiction and translated, and it's sort of, um, from what I can tell, I've kind of dipped in and out um, once I got it. It's like got a fable, fairy tale, folkloric ask. 
uh, feeling to it, sort of those morality tales or things that are teaching us a lesson, but with different things. Um, I have never been disappointed, and I haven't read a lot of Japanese, uh, modern Japanese folklore or fables, so I'm super excited to get to this one. This is Once and Forever, The Tales of Kenji Miyazami, translated by John Bester. Again, this is out by New York Review of Books. I don't know about you, but I don't know many readers who don't like a list. I love a list. And what are the best type of, types of lists? Lists of books. Can I be, I mean, am I right? I'm right. And I don't think the next book is going to be one of those books that we go through and we read cover to finish, but I think it's going to be one of those things that you keep beside your bed as an inspiration. And that is 1,000 Books to Read Before You Die, A Life-Changing List by James Mustich. And this is out by Workman. And it is exactly what it says. Mr. Um, Mustich has put together a collection of a thousand novels, books, all sorts of different things, nonfiction, fiction, uh, graphic novels. Um, what I really love about this is when I opened it, Barbara Pym's Excellent Women was in there, which I love. I saw a book by Beverly Cleary, um, Tanahashi Coast's nonfiction book is in there. Um, he really does a great job of recognizing different types of literature, different books from around the world, um, men, women, gay, straight. So I think it's really super inclusive which i find really exciting and what else is really interesting is there's plays poems um and he is definitely non-exclusive so i mean he's really trying to encompass a list of all the different things that we should read it has like little blurbs where it talks about the books gives you a little bit of history and then it also um gives you almost like a little bit of literary criticism. Not a whole lot, but just enough to keep you interested. So if you like book lists, I think this is a book that you will want to definitely have on your nightstand. And that's 1,000 Books to Read Before You Die, A Life-Changing List by James Mustich. And it is out again on October 2nd, out by Workman. When I met him at Book Expo America, he's very interested in knowing what books that you think should have been included that maybe he left out, or what books uh, that he included that you think shouldn't have been there. So he was very open to the whole thing. And I bet, you know, the book could have been bazillions of pages long. The next book is coming to you from Grey Wolf, which I adore Grey Wolf. I think they're amazing. And it is called Scribe, and it is by Allison Hagee. Now, when I got this at Book Expo, the girl at Grey, uh, Grey Wolf said this was her most excited release that they were putting out. And it's a dystopian novel that she likened on to um, something along the lines of um, Station Eleven. Um, but what I really like is the idea is that our main character, it's after a, a major civil war, it's also after a major fever has killed off people. She lives on sort of a homestead, and she is known because she can write. People come to her to write letters. And um, she has a, a large piece of land and a group of people that are called the Uninvited set up a temporary camp. She gets along, she has a, like a peace with the neighbors and what's called the local enforcer, which... That just sounds fascinating. His name is Billy Kingery. And it says, when a man with hidden motivation requests a letter, it unleashes the ghosts of her troubled past and sets off a series of increasingly calamit calamitous events. Sorry, struggled with that word for a minute. So if you're looking for your next dystopian fiction, I think Scribe is going to be the one for you. Again, this is out by Grey Wolf Press by Allison Haggy. Okay, now it's time to tell you about some middle grade fiction. Um, and that is Everlasting Nora by Maria Miranda Cruz. This is out by Starscape. Now, what I was super excited and why I stood in line to get this book is I haven't read much middle grade. Actually, I haven't read much fiction that takes place in the Philippines. So I thought that that was really an interesting um, thing to expand my own horizon. And this is the story of Nora. Her and her mother live in an apartment. Something happens and she winds up in the Philippines living in a shanting town. And what happens is her mother disappears. Her and her best friend Jojo, and with the support of her grandmother, go in search of her mother. Um, I think it has sort of like a ghost story aspect to it too. I'm not exactly 100% sure. Um, but I will say Maria Miranda Cruz was just lovely when I met her. And uh, she signed this book for me. And I, I'm really excited 
excited to get middle fiction out there, middle grade fiction, because I like to find books to give to my nieces, my nephews, and to the children in my life that I want to encourage to read. So again, Everlasting Nora by Maria Miranda Cruz, out on October 2nd by Starscape. Okay, now it's time for one of those funny celebrity memoirs. We all need them. Every once in a while, you just want to laugh. And this book, I think, is going to crack us up. And it's written by two people that I just find hilarious. And that is The, Le the Greatest Love Story Ever Told, written by Megan Mullally and Nick Offerman. Now, Megan Mullally, of course, is famous for being Karen on Will and Grace. Nick Offerman was on Parks and Recreation. I'll be honest, I think Nick Offerman is quite a handsome gentleman. I think they are both hilarious. I saw a little bit at Book Expo America. They did sort of a panel on it. It's going to be that kind of book. I have a feeling this is going to be an audiobook for me because if they both read it, it's going to be worth every minute of it. Again, this is out by Dutton. It is out on October 2nd, and it's The Greatest Love Story Ever Told by Megan Mullally and Nick Offerman. I'm just going to show you the back piece of this just so you guys can kind of see. They've just got such an amazing sense of humor. So I'm super uh, excited to sort of just lose myself in their sense of humor. Okay, two more books coming out. And I want to thank very much Quirk Books um, for sending me a copy of Girl Squads by Sam Maggs. This is illustrated by Jen Woodall, and it's 20 Female Friendships That Changed History. Now, if you guys don't know Quirk Books, they do a lot of stuff like this, and they are phenomenal. They're beautiful. The artwork is phenomenal. The, the whole package is really good. I love to get stuff like this for my um, middle uh, teenage years and high school nieces and nephews. Now, I just flipped through this when it came in. I saw that the, the women from uh, the movie um, Hidden, 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 Oh my gosh, I can't uh, the one about the women who uh, worked for NASA. Um, I can't, uh, I, hidden is the only word I can remember. Um, but it separates it into political and act, uh, activist squads, science squads, warrior squads, artist squads. And it just talks about groups of friendships of women and uh, the amazing things that they've accomplished. And the art really is just phenomenal. I'll just show you this one. So that's pretty cool. Hidden Figures. That's the name of that movie. So um, I think that that's super great. So thank you very much to Cork Books for sending this to me. This is Girl Squad, 20 Female Friendships That Changed History by Sam Maggs, illustrated by Jen Woodall. Last but not least on the October 2nd list is a memoir that I've already talked about once on my channel when I talked about the big buzz books that were coming out and the ones that the editors were the most excited about. And this is There Will Be No Miracles Here, a memoir by Casey Gerald. Now this is out by Riverhead Books again on October 2nd. I'm gonna read the back to you because it has a lot going on. So Casey Gerald's story begins at the end of the world, Dallas, New Year's Eve, 1999, when he gathers with the congregation of his grandfather's black evangelical church to see which of them will be carried off. His beautiful, fragile mother disappears frequently and mysteriously. For a brief idol, he and his sister live like boxcar children on her disability checks. When Casey, following in the footsteps of his father, a grid, a grid iron legend who's literally broke his back for the team, is recruited to play football at Yale, he enters a world he's never dreamed of, the anterior room of secret societies and successes on Wall Street, in Washington and beyond. But even as he attains the inner sanctums of power, Casey sees how the world crushes those who live in its margins. He sees how the elite, elite perpetuate the salvation stories that keep others from rising that aggrandize themselves, that protect the ever more un unattainable status quo. And he sees most painfully how his own ascension is, ascension is part of the scheme. Now, funny story is that I was in an airport, I was flying home from somewhere, I wanna say Cleveland, and across from me were a group of women that were just at a book event. And they were um, purchasers and buyers for the libraries. I wanna say they were all from Atlanta, Georgia, or that area. And they told me at their event that Casey Gerald spoke. And they told me that he was the most amazing public speaker that they had seen at an event in ages. And I think 
for them, they've probably seen many an author talk about their book. So that is a resounding. When librarians or people who work in libraries tell you something like that, it, it puts it on your list, does it not? So this is There Will Be No Miracles Here by Casey Gerald. It is a memoir. And I have to be honest with you, I think this cover is a little bit overdone. I feel like this is everywhere right now. But I think the story is unique and I hear his, the way he tells it is fantastic. So there you go. There's a stack of books coming out at the beginning of October. I will be back with part two in this series in a week or so so that I can tell you about the rest of the books. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much for being here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that mo many of these books wind up on your TBR and that you like what you saw. Until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!